call from Jason Bateman. <laughs> okay. Uh, and from Scott Stuber, our producer. And they said, look, we have this idea, this, uh, this uh, spec screenplay they bought years earlier. And it had been kind of sitting there. They tried it, taking it in a, in a different direction, more dramatic direction. It's actually quite a beautiful script that was written by a really good screenwriter. But, you know, it wasn't the movie they wanted to make, and they weren't quite sure what to do. And then Jason saw Melissa in Bridesmaids and said, well, wait a second. Forget two guys. What if it's, you know, so that was all there. So what I got was a, a story about someone whose identity is stolen, and he has to go find the person who did it and bring them back to put his life back together, and he wanted it to be Melissa McCarthy. We all know, everybody of my generation knows Jason's voice really well, and I had seen Melissa in Bridesmaids, and I would seen her in Gilmore Girls, and um, and Jason also sent me this amazing YouTube thing she, she's done that I don't think a lot of people know about it called uh, Marbles. She has this character named Marbles. It's hysterical, just YouTube, Melissa McCarthy, Marbles. Um, but, uh, I sat with her, and while I was, it was actually right before I was going to write the outline, because I write pretty extensive outlines, and we just talked about her character, and even down to, like, what does she wear? What's her deal with makeup? What is she, everything, hair, all of it, you know, just how does she look? Because I find that when, when I'm writing these things, I kind of want to, you know, watch a little scene in my head and then write that scene. It just makes it more like a movie and less like a... A list of things that they're going to change on the day and make like a movie, you know? I want it to be a movie. So, um, yeah, no, it's, it, it, it's a gift to have to write for someone, and it's an extra gift when you're writing for people like that. I'm curious because obviously Melissa's amazing at improv, and we know this, and Jason's great too. Yeah. How much of what I saw last night mm. were your words that you wrote, and how much is them, you know, improvising? Yeah. Uh, I didn't write any of it. No. Uh, it. It's it is, you know. I'm sure when you ask this of different parties, you'll get different answers. From where I'm sitting, it was remarkably true to the script. There are moments where they do, um, they do kind of go above and beyond in in great ways. Um, the truth is, because we were all together, um, uh, you know, I wrote it and we all read it and we read it out loud and then I reread. It that it is a reflection very much of our collective spirit. So there wasn't, I wasn't expecting that there was going to be flights of fancy throughout the whole thing. It's not, you know, there's the Apatow School, which is very improvisational. That that wasn't this. Frankly, we didn't have the schedule for it. I mean, we didn't have the budget or the schedule, you know. We were we were on a pretty tight leash. Um, so the Milkshake song was written in the script? The the <laughs> idea of, of singing. Uh, okay. Yes. Was, okay. Yeah, they picked different songs. Songs that yeah, she would work I, with. Yeah, uh, I think I had Walking on Sunshine. Okay. Uh, but, you know, we had to deal with, like, clearances and all, yeah, and all yeah. that stuff. Um, but they did add songs for sure. And what she does inside of those songs was improvisational, you know, like just the, I can hit it and all that. It just, that's her. Well, I have you for a couple more minutes. I, yeah. I got to ask you about Hangover 3. Of course. I, how, how did the production go? Awesome. I mean, it was crazy. This movie is nuts. It is really big. It is ambitious. I think creatively it was very exciting because it was, it was a new kind of story that we were telling with these characters, but also very much an end that relates all the way back to the first and second movies. Um, it ties off everything. It kind of explains everything in a way, and um, and and it's also quite touching at times too. And um, and you know, with Todd, it, aud audacity. You know, it's just so audacious. The stuff he does. You know, he's always like, okay, let me show you where the new line is. Okay, forget the old line. <laughs> We're not even jumping over that line here. I'm just making a new line over here. That's what we'll go be. Um, I'm really looking forward to showing that one. We're editing it right now. Awesome. Now, I heard a rumor, uh, and maybe you can confirm or deny this, that um, it, this is a rumor that was online a while ago, that uh, it's going to end with the idea that all the characters, all the movies took place inside Alan's head, and that he's in a mental institution. Is, is, I, mean, I, can, I can definitely deny Deny that. that that's not true. Good, good. I wanted to get that on the record. That's a terrible idea. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's the state elsewhere ending, well, or, basically. Well, or Newhart. I mean, it's yeah. great for that. Yeah. Uh, great for that. Uh, but no, no, no. These things definitely happened. Oh, good. That's part of what's so... I mean, frankly, what I love so much about this third movie, from a storytelling point of view, is that we actually confront... You know, we... You, in comedy, we're meant to sort of laugh at the crazy guy. And this movie says, yeah, but is that, should we be? <laughs> Something's wrong here, you know? And, and we, we confront it head on. 